Welcome to the 3B Waxing Show. I'm putting in the topic, which is what you need to wax at home. So we're gonna go over the list of what you need to properly wax at home. So I'm gonna pin it. Hey Don, 86 Diva. Welcome to the 3B Waxing Show. Hey, uh, protector of her peace. Welcome to the 3B Waxing Show. So the title is at the bottom, what you need to wax at home. And, you know, I started teaching people how to wax at home this year because of the pandemic. And so because I closed down in March, that's when I started. And I started doing uh, wax with me calls where I could teach you or your partner how to wax yourself at home uh, during this time. And it's gone pretty, it's been going pretty well. Hey, uh, the Georgia Williams, welcome back to the Waxing Show. So it's been going well. And um, I'm going to keep doing it until, you know, I can open up the salon again. So yeah, that's what I have been doing to help you guys with waxing at home. So today we're gonna go over what you need to wax at home and you can ask me questions on uh, things that you have that you wanna substitute. Say you don't have what I'm mentioning, um, then you know, if you have like, oh, I have this instead with this work, yeah. I'll let you know. I uh, Celeste Parake. Welcome to the Three Boxing Show. So that is what today is. Also, I um, am doing an article for someone about this topic. So I thought it was appropriate to do for this week's topic. It's all about talking about waxing yourself. Another announcement I have before we get into the intro and the content is the pads will be back in stock on Friday. So they will be back. Um, and if you notice, it's a shorter window of waiting for them. So I'm very excited about one, you guys are loving the pads. And two, they are, you know, I'm getting more of a system so I can get them out to you faster because they are made fresh. They're made in small batches. It does take a little bit longer, but just figuring out, figuring that out for you guys. Hey, sweet thing, 85. Welcome to the Debbie Waxing Show. So those are the announcements. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It's important. Not that I can think of. Hey, Sierra. Welcome to the Debbie Waxing Show. Um... Yeah, so there's nothing else I can think of that's an announcement, so I'll do the intro and then we will get started into what you need to wax yourself at home. So welcome to the 3B Waxing Show, welcome to the 3B Waxing Show, and so you remember, welcome to the 3B Waxing Show. I am Becca, your pro waxer and skin therapist since 2010. I help people remove unwanted hair, acne, discoloration, ingrowns through full body waxing, chemical peels, facials, and products. I have my own product line that's been sold all over the US, the UK, Canada, and the UAE. Those are the acne ingrown pads and the fruit enzyme pads. Like I was saying, they're back in stock on Friday, which I'm excited about. Um, I also help estheticians start their own product line, start their own salon suite, attract clients, and improve their waxing technique. I've been the regional trainer for a large waxing franchise and the lead esthetician and pro waxer at a high-end gym in Newport Beach. Um, I go live Wednesday through Friday uh, at 3.26 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And every time it's a different topic, I email the Wax Lounge if it's about waxing. So if you're on that email list, you got an email right before I went live. Uh, the lab, if I, I'll email the lab if I go live about any topics about skincare and ingredients. And then I will email Salon T if I go live about anything about business or starting a product line or anything esthetician related. So those are the times I go on. So yeah, that's how you can stay connected. All those um, email lists, if you click the link in the bio, you'll find the button for them. So, 
starting to wax at home. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need a wax pot and you're going to need hard wax. Um, I don't have a, a pot to show you because my pot obviously is a professional size pot. Even my small one is pretty professional, but they have small pots that you can get on Amazon and it's around 30 to $40. Hey Elizabeth, welcome to the Google Boxing Show. And you can get those and they usually come with wax, but I'm gonna, I've been recommending for my clients to get this brand uh, because some of the brands out there that are on Amazon, they'll do the job, but they're just not great for your skin. So um, I've tried one of the popular ones on Amazon that come with the wax pot and you know, it broke out the person's skin that I was doing. Uh, we wind up putting aloe on and it was fine the next day, but it's not the best quality wax. I'm gonna recommend that you get Serapil Blue wax. Um, I didn't know that it was not just a professional brand and that anyone could get it off of Amazon. I thought that, you know, only professionals could get it because this is one of the ones I use in the salon but you can get it on Amazon. It's a little more expensive than the other hard waxes you'll see, but it is totally worth it. So uh, here's what it looks like. Cerepil, C-I-R-E-P-I-L, and hard wax. And I've gone over many times with the differences between hard and soft waxes, but basically hard wax you are only going to need the wax when you do the sip, the sticks and the wax. Because with soft wax, you'll need the wax, the stick, and a muslin strip or some type of cloth to put over the wax to take it off. With hard wax, it just goes on, it hardens, and then you rip it off. Less messy. It's not going to make you sticky. It's so worth it. Uh, and when I have people do their wax with me calls on on Tuesdays, I prefer and I guess I require because I really don't want to teach you how to do soft wax because you can really mess up your skin. Uh, I teach you how to wax yourself with hard wax. So it doesn't have to be this brand, but this is a good brand. Uh, some of them come in little blocks that you can heat up but you want hard wax. One thing I wanna clear up because it did come up this week about the wax with me calls. If you don't feel comfortable doing a Brazilian wax, like in front of like me waxing, or you waxing yourself, but me on video and you don't feel comfortable doing that. Cause not everybody feels comfortable because I realize like my clients who see me regularly, they really know me, but some people have only met me from online. Uh, I can still just teach you and you know show you how to apply strips and stuff over video. And then you can do it you know, in your own privacy. But that has come up and I'm like, I get it. You don't know me that well. You only know me through the internet. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, so the first one is hard wax. I don't have the... Uh, Usually I write on the whiteboard for our 3B waxing show, but I did a call yesterday that I wrote my notes on the whiteboard, so I have to email them out before I can do reason. So if you are doing any face waxing, then you are going to need some small sticks. Now I'm gonna show you some options of what you can use, and then I'll tell you which one that I prefer. one option and these are I don't even have the original bag for it but these kind of sticks you can get them at a craft store it's like basically it almost looks like um like a fence pick you can use these for your face uh, for your brows if you were to use these for your nose I would 
do it in sections because they're so thin. You can use these for your sideburns. Uh, you could use it for your chin, your neck. So here's an option. It's not my favorite option, but it is an option. Uh, you can do a lot, of, a good amount of pressure with these. My thing is, though, with waxing, is that if you put too much pressure on, you can break it. I'm not gonna break it today, but. And the reason why you wanna add a lot of pressure when you're applying hard wax is because it's going to coat the hair better so that the hair comes out easier. So one thing I teach other estheticians when I'm teaching them how to wax other people, I say, you know, you're gonna break the stick before you hurt the client. So when you are waxing at home, you do want to apply a lot of pressure. I'm sure you guys can hear the kids outside. They're playing in the pool. So that's the first one for face waxing, the first option of a stick. The second option I have to show you is these. They're like the nail pushbacks. And these, some people really like these with hard wax. You take a little bit on, your, on the stick part where you would um, push back your cuticles and you would apply it under your brow. Someone's not happy out there. You can do this for the nose as well. I would again do it in sections. I wouldn't really recommend using this one, but you can use it. Uh, the lip. Lower lip. I don't feel like you can get enough on these to do the chin. I mean, you could, but you'd have to do it in small sections. But if all you're doing is brows and you have these at home, you can do your brows with these. You can even do your sideburns with them too as well. So, you know, how do you want to do that? Okay, so here's the one that I prefer for all face waxing. And this, I... No, you've seen it. It's like a pops regular popsicle stick. Good for brows, hairline, uh, good for nose. You can do it all in one. If your nose is really hairy, then I'm gonna suggest that you do it in steps. Like the inside, the top, the bottom, and the side. The Good for the sideburns, the cheek. I do all of my face waxing when I'm in the salon with these ones for the face. So this is the ideal, ideal size. So we have hard wax and then we have uh, the small sticks for the face. So you have three options, I'll show them again. decide which one will work best for you or which one you have at home okay now before you wax you really do not need to prep the skin that much when I do face waxing I don't take off people's makeup because I can wax over the makeup and be fine. If it's a lot on the brow area and I can't really see the brow, I'll take it off with like a toner, an antiseptic. But if you're at home, which a lot of you are, that's the point of this is what you need to wax yourself at home, then just cleanse your skin regularly. Put some moisturizer on if you want and then you're ready to wax. You may want to pre-prep your underarms with a toner or just cleanse. Like say you were working and then you came home 
and you didn't want to shower, you just wanted to wax and then shower, then I would just say use something to wipe off the deodorant. Uh, and then for your bikini line, you may just feel comfortable do using a baby wipe and just wiping down there before you start waxing. But everything else, you really don't need to pre-treat the skin. For the underarms and the Brazilian area, before you wax, you may want to apply oil, that's optional. Especially on the Brazilian area, you may want to do that to put some moisture in the hair. And I don't want to even say moisture, just to, if your skin is dry, the oil is going to help. But if you are waxing your underarms in Brazilian, before you lay a strip, I recommend uh, using some body powder. And this one's from Medline, but you can use any body powder. Uh, I use the one with cornstarch. I don't know if you guys have heard about that controversy with talc, which from my understanding, that's if you use talc every day. So if you have talc one, you should be fine, but I have the cornstarch one for my clients. And put that on there to grab any moisture before you apply your, your wax. So you apply it, um, dust it a little bit, and then apply it. This is going to help the wax adhere to your skin better. And then you can use it throughout the wax depending on how sweaty you get. So especially if it's your first time, you may sweat a bit because like your adrenaline rises. So have this handy just in case. So we have our body powder. Our wax speeds, which is hard wax. Uh, Cerapil is the brand I've been recommending. And then our stick. And there's different types of stick I went over, but we need our stick for our face. Uh, I'm going to reintroduce myself for those who just joined, and then we're going to get into the rest of what else you need. So, welcome to the Waxing Show. Welcome to the Waxing Show. And so, you remember. Welcome to the Zippy Waxing Show. I am Becca, your pro waxer and skin therapist since 2010. I help people remove unwanted hair, acne, discoloration, and ingrowns through full body waxing, chemical pills, facials, and products. I made my product line, which is my exfoliating pads that have been sold in the US, the UK, Canada, and the UAE. They're the acne and ingrown pads and the fruit enzyme pads that are chemical exfoliants, so they're good for sensitive skin. They'll be back in stock on Friday. If you click the link in the bio, the first button is the wait list. Um, I also help estheticians start their own product lines, start their own salon suite, attract clients, and improve their waxing technique. And improve their waxing technique. Um, I've been the regional trainer for a large waxing franchise and the lead esthetician at a high-end gym at Newport Beach. Uh, if you would like to know when I go live and send out information about waxing, you can join the Wax Lounge. Uh, it's an email list that I send waxing information to. The lab is where I send skin ingredients and product information to and then the salon tea is where i send business information and uh information on starting your own product line because i've helped estheticians and massage therapists and non-estheticians start their own product line and help them with the process of what i've done so that's the show all right and then if you find this information useful and you want an actual list of all this stuff then DM me because I, did, I wasn't able to put that list um, in my menu on Instagram. So DM me just the word list and I'll send you a link. And then if you are interested in learning how to wax yourself and you would like me to help you and us to do a call on video, I do those on Tuesdays and you can book it by clicking the link in the bio. And it's the button that says skin improvement call or wax with me call. So, I don't know why I'm closing this one up. You need a wax pot, you need hard wax, you need body powder, you need your small sticks for your face. You do need some type of calming cream or um, aftercare cream, moisturizer that has aloe in it, 
something that you can apply that will soothe your skin. You can also put aloe just directly on your skin. Depends on what you have at home as well. Especially for the face and if you are really sensitive on your face for like the brows, the sideburns, upper lip, um, your bikini line, if you want to put something in afterwards, uh, I recommend it. If you're just going to go shower afterwards, try not to do a really hot, hot shower afterwards and then you can put, you know, do your regular routine after that. I would not recommend putting the exfoliating pads on after you've waxed because you've already exfoliated. It may be too much exfoliation on your skin and make it too sensitive. It's good to use the exfoliating pads the day before, two days before your wax, because then it'll help the hair come out better. And that's the acne ingrown pads or the fruit enzyme, but a lot of people like the acne ingrown ones right before they wax. The other thing you need for your body waxing is your large sticks, the tum tongue depressor sticks. Good for underarms, stomach strip, stomach, Brazilian legs. If you're having somebody help you with your back or your butt, this is even good for the back of your neck. If you're let, if you're gonna have somebody do the back of your neck, you can wax everything. Uh, your arms definitely get these ones you can get them at Hobby Lobby Amazon anywhere just the tongue depressor type so here are the difference between the sticks this is the face one and this is the body one and then when you're first starting out you will probably just want to use the stick like this but as you get better with manipulating the hard wax, you can cut them in half and use them so it's gonna save you some money. And then even though it's your personal wax pot, you may not wanna double dip just because in case you wind up waxing a friend or just for like bacteria reasons, you can use one side of the stick and then switch over and use the other side. Same with this as well. Just be careful with the pointy edges here. So try not to double dip. If you come in the salon and I'm waxing you, I don't double dip. But I know this is your personal wax pot, but you still may not want to double dip. Any questions about waxing at home, waxing any of the things that went over? So let me just make sure whatever. Wax pot, um, your wax, your hard wax, your sticks, your body powder, your aftercare cream, an oil if you decide you want an oil. To clean your wax pot, you, all wax pots are different, but alcohol has been a good one or alcohol or oil. So there are oil cleansers that you can get that either come with the wax pot or, you know, are suggested when you buy it from Amazon or if you're at a beauty store, you'll see it. I highly recommend just buying one of those or, you know, trying to figure it out yourself with alcohol and your own oil. Like, did you do oil first and then clean it all up with alcohol? It just depends on the wax pot. But... You do want to keep your wax pot clean for just san sanitation wise. I know it's just yourself using it, but you do want to, you know, be clean for yourself. And over time, it just starts piling up and it makes it really hard to use the wax pot. So if you can clean it after every use or after every third use or second use, that's going to be very beneficial. Uh, for you so you don't have to clean it all at once and another thing you can do is you could put oil around the wax pot so that way when you are pulling out uh, wax and there's strings getting involved it's easy to clean up those strings because the surface is oily so you can just go and grab that So 
see him. I am going to get some water and then I'm going to give you three things to know. Well, I have one in mind that I really want to tell you about. So I don't know if I'll go into the two. Maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. But one important thing about um, the wax. So I'm going to get some water and I'll be here. So these are the things that you're going to need to wax yourself. Again, you can um, get all this stuff. If you need a list of it, just DM me the word list and I'll send you the list I made of all this stuff. Um, if you want to book a call to learn <clears throat> to wax yourself, then um, you can do that by clicking the link in the bio. Which wax pot do you recommend? So I had one that I recommended on Amazon, but they wind up. Um, hey Whitney, how are you? Welcome to the Three Waxing Show. Uh, they wind up upping the price of it on Amazon. It was it started with an F, but it was a small pot that was this big, and I just didn't think it was worth it. One of my clients sent me like, hey, they upped the price on this. They kept going in and out of having it and then they eventually just raise the price so i don't have one to recommend but they're pretty much all standard i mean if it's a small one it should be fine to grab on amazon or beauty supply store even if there are some that are on like offer up where they're used but they're not dirty or anything just the person's like getting rid of it and uh, you can use that you do want to make sure that the type of wax that you get, the cans fit into there. So that I'm glad you asked that question because there's something that's important about the wax pots. If you buy it where it's a wax pot and the wax together, then they'll have all the stuff for you to set it all up. If you buy it singular, which will probably be cheaper, there's some things you need to know about the size of the pot. There are, so I showed you how hard wax comes into beads and stuff. If you bought a pot and it doesn't have a holder and it's just the pot and this, you don't want to put this directly in there unless the pot's made like that. Uh, I'm trying to explain this the best way. So you have the pot, the wax pot. Some of them have little holders that go in and out of the wax pot so you can switch it out. Some just have that, that one area. If you are planning to use other types of wax, then you're gonna wanna get the one where you can replace the wax pot. If you're like, you know what, I know I'm just gonna use the hard wax that you said, it's the best, um, you said it, I'm just gonna use that, that's all. Then all you need is just this and then that wax pot. Now, if you are getting wax that is hard wax but it's in a can, you do need to see the size of the can and see the size of the wax pot and what kind of cans it takes, because that's important. You don't wanna be stuck with a large can and then your wax pot holder is small and there's not much you can do with that. So that is, that is that part. One thing I also wanted to mention when you're waxing at home, the type of consistency you want the wax to have is the consistency of cake batter. You want it to be thick. You don't want it to just, you don't want to pull it from the wax pot and it just drip, 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 drip really fast. That just means it's too hot. Since you are not a professional and you're doing this at home, then take the wax 
and do some sensitivity test on your wrist to make sure the wax is the appropriate temperature. You're welcome. Another thing to remember is that if you have been out in the heat and then you go and wax yourself, you may feel like the wax is hotter than it really is because your body is retaining heat. So that's something to remember. Hey, Tasha. Welcome to the 3 Waxing Show. So those are the important things I wanted to tell you about waxing at home. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones. The temperature, the size of the pot. Um, here is a really good tip to know. Just like gorgeous makeup. Thank you. Is if you drop wax on the floor. And this is a huge benefit of using hard wax. If you drop wax on the floor, let it stay there. Uh, first of all, you should be waxing on either hard floor wood, something that's not carpet. And if you're doing it on carpet just and you drop it, just plan to throw it away. I don't know what to tell you. But do it on towel or something like that. But if you drop wax on the floor, just let it sit and harden and then go back and scrape it, scrape it up. Because if you let it, if you start playing around with it while it's warm, it's going to smear and it's going to be harder to get up. So if you have a ball of wax that just falls down or drips down, like say you're doing your underarm, because this happens to me all the time and I'm, you know, professional, I've been doing this for years. Like sometimes it'll drop down. Just let it drop and then harden and then go pick it up after like two minutes. It's going to save your floors and you a lot of time because then you're going to have to go and get some oil or get some alcohol and try to clean it and it just gets messy and you don't want to do that. So that is the other tip I had for waxing at home. So to go over the list again, do you have some new people come in? Uh, body powder for the underarms and the Brazilian. You need your sticks, one for the face, the size for the body. And then once you get good at waxing, start cutting them in half to save you on cost. An aftercare cream or aloe, uh, your wax pot, and I think that's all that we talked about. I know we talked about a lot of stuff, but I think those are the main things that you need. One other thing I wanted to say, and it was kind of cheesy, but it's actually important, is you have to be in the right state of mind to wax yourself. Uh, let me get some water real quick. <laughs> Using hard wax is going to be less painful for you, but waxing is not like, people have asked me multiple times, is waxing painful? Yes, waxing is painful. It's not as painful as, you know, some videos have shown it to be, but it is pain it's painful. Um, so, you know, take your aspirin or ibuprofen before. Do what you need to do beforehand. Alcohol does thin your blood and they say not to do it. But when you come in to get a wax from me, I'm going to offer you a glass of wine. And sometimes when I wax myself, I'll drink. Not like heavily or anything, but just, you know, to relax. And, you know, mentally prepare. Uh, mentally tell yourself that you're going to do a good job, first of all, and that it's going to be easy. Hey, mom. 
uh, welcome to the three blue boxes show you wish you were me is my mom and she makes my shirt actually she made this shirt I am she's on my shirts and then if you are a client and you come in she makes uh, like the little calendar uh, that you got or the um, Valentine's Day chocolate holders she makes all those that's her um, going back on what we're talking about is oh yeah mentally prepare yourself to wax I've been waxing myself for years but let's see I started thinking when I was like 16, 15 or 16. So over 10, 11 years. And I've been waxing other people. And I still mentally prepare myself like a week before. Like, oh, I'm going to wax. I'm going to wax myself. Like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Because um, it's easy to just get kind of lazy and not do it. But then if you don't do it, you're not like prepared, one, for anything that comes up. And two, you aren't staying on your cycle, your hair growth cycle, and it's going to be a lot more painful the longer you wait. So start putting those things in your mind. Like if I wait too long, it's going to be more painful. Uh, I want to be prepared for anything that comes up that I need to be waxed for and those kind of things. So start, you know, it's telling yourself it's not going to be that bad da, 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 da. just tell yourself that for a week and then when you go and wax yourself you're like prepared for it you know and then sometimes I'll just tell myself like oh this strip's not gonna hurt this strip's not gonna hurt I've been being consistent this is not gonna hurt and that goes into that whole week you want to be exfoliating so the hair comes out easier and it's less painful and then there's one other thing I wanted to say about mentally preparing. Oh, make it a fun experience. So, you know, if you're waxing with me, like if you're doing a wax with me call, we're talking and, you know, it's like as if you're coming in, but you're doing it yourself and I'm just guiding you through it. But we still like chat in between. But, um... If you're just doing it by yourself, you know, make it an event, make it like you're going to the salon. So you are looking forward to it. Um, start thinking or, you know, light a candle, put a YouTube on, you know, watch back some old videos that I've done, you know, whatever will make you feel good. Instead of all, I'm going to be in a lot of pain. I have been to bliss spot I have not been so if I was in your situation and it had been a long time because that has happened to me in the beginning of the quarantine I like in the be right when it was happening when it wasn't happening and then when it did I had gone too long and I was like oh my gosh this is probably gonna hurt I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it step by step, you know, one strip at a time. Uh, because, you know, especially your Brazilian air can just get like a forest if you don't, you know, calm it down. So you just do step by step, one strip at a time, breathing in, breathing out. Uh, take a little bit of alcohol if that's your thing. Take some ibuprofen, whatever you need to do to relax and get it done because you will feel so accomplished when you wax yourself especially your brazilian but anywhere any any area even if you are just new at doing your underarms or anything you'll feel so accomplished like oh i got this done um especially since at least salons just opened up here, but there's like some things going on with that. But I haven't opened up, and I know there's other estheticians who haven't opened up as well. And, you know, 
you can't get in to get your wax, so you gotta do it yourself, so. He said, yes, I feel so good after wax. Yes, I tell you, it will change your life. Uh, you feel so good, you feel so sexy. I feel like you can take on the world. Uh, I was watching Girlfriends and I was gonna video it and put it on my stories, but I didn't. I've been watching Girlfriends on Netflix and there's a episode where Maya gets a Brazilian wax and she gets Brazilian wax while she's in Jamaica. I think it's in Jamaica, yeah. And her husband Darnell is like, you've been acting so different. <laughs> since you got your Brazilian locks. Along the lines, he said something like that. And I was like, I should video this and put this out there because it's so true. He's gained so much confidence with it. But, but yeah. So, that is what you gotta do for waxing. But once you can start waxing yourself, even if you plan on going back to the salon, like once it's safe, I know some people are just, you know, waiting out. Some of my clients are waiting for me, which I'm very thankful for that. Um, and, you know, I appreciate that. But some people are just waiting because they don't even want to be out to get the, the virus. And they're like, I'm just gonna have to take matters into my own hand. And uh, you'll feel really good about yourself. You'll be able to do it. So even if you plan on going back, at least you can stay with it until you get waxed from a professional. And I have a feeling that everywhere, when things are back to normal and the vaccine comes along, the salons are gonna be crowded and booked. And I mean, people are already booked right now because there are still people who are like, I'm just gonna go out, whatever. But when it's all open, I know I'm gonna have to be prepared for waxing a lot of people who are hairy because they're just waiting. So, that's that. All right. So we went over what you need to wax yourself at home. We also went over some of some tips and things of how to get the best wax or the wax experience basically not we didn't so much go into how to get the best wax but the wax experience so making sure you're you know not cleaning the wax once you drop it because it's gonna smear it making sure it's batter the consistency of batter the wax is the consistency of batter so that it's not gonna burn you as well it's gonna apply better some other best practices when it comes to waxing is it's funny because I can think of best practices on how to be good at waxing through watching movies a lot of movies will bring up waxing it's a funny thing if that well, we'll watch a movie and waxing will come up. But I'll watch it and, I'm, and I'll be telling my husband like, that's not how you do it. That's not at all good. Example. When you pull a strip, you want to press on that area right after you pull it. It tricks your body and the nerves and it tricks it into thinking that there wasn't pain. So as soon as you pull a strip, press down on it. When you apply the wax, you wanna apply it the direction of the hair and then pull the, the strip the opposite. So apply the direction of the hair and then pull the strip the opposite. When you're doing the cleanup strips, you'll pull You'll apply the, sh the wax the opposite way of the hair row and then pull the opposite. Another thing about waxing that makes it less painful is something I do for my clients is I hold their skin really taut. The more your skin is stretched out, 
the less it's going to hurt when you pull pull a strip so if you're doing your underarms a good way is to hold the skin up like this uh, or hold it down I'm right-handed so like I have to hold it down like that same with your sideburns if I was to do a strip Say I did a strip from here to here, then I would hold it taut right underneath that strip and then pull it up. Same with if I applied a strip as a cleanup going up, then I would hold this area to hold it taut and then pull down. So it's gonna help it be less painful. And I go through all this when you are, you know, doing a call with me because I'm doing it specifically to you, your skin and teaching you how to really play with the wax. I guess play with the wax is not a word, but you know what I mean, like manipulate it and stuff. Because then once you get good at it, you can do whatever. just thinking of what else that needs to go with waxing yourself at home as far as what you need to prepare for it <clears throat> you don't need um, much else I recommend if you are going to do your Brazilian do not wear underwear when you're doing it just take it all off because you'll wind up getting underwear on your, you'll wind up getting wax on your underwear and it's hard to get off so you don't want to do that she said okay perfect so apply wax in the same direction as hair and pull in the opposite direction yes so that will be your initial strip direction of the hair and then pull the opposite and it is normal for your hair to grow in all different directions and areas so then just make st smaller strips if your hair does that for underarms a lot of times it happens like there'll be areas that go down sideways almost in a circle and just do a strip that way and pull and then when you're doing your cleanup strips you'll do it the opposite so you'll do, um, so, so that's the initial, the one you just said. Then say you do it and you applied enough pressure and then you pulled it and then you apply pressure after and it was a good strip, it took a lot of the hair. Then you're gonna go the opposite way. You're gonna put the wax the opposite way because there's not a lot of hair there. And then you're gonna pull it opposite again and that'll be your cleanup strip but say hopefully you're following me with all this but say you did your initial strip and you still had a lot of hair left then I would do another strip like the first one where you apply it the same direction as hair and then pull the opposite direction and then if that gets enough hair then do a cleanup strip and you want to try to stick with going over the skin three times you're welcome so that will help you, you know, get better at your waxing. Yeah. And then sometimes you just need help. I know like when you, when I'm doing calls with people, it's sometimes you just need help with knowing your hair direction and like, oh, should I go up, you know, up in this area? Should I go down? Especially with the labia. That you, I, as a waxer, teach other waxers to go down first. People, some people go up, some people go down, because the hair kind of goes in. So if it 
goes really in, then you want to go down, but more in towards uh, towards the butt. And I know this is a little more complicated, so you know, I I get it if uh, you don't follow me because it's kind of more advanced. But yeah, if you can't go the the exact direction, then try to at least go a little bit off of there or like down so if it goes in try to make your strip like go down go down well thank you for joining the 3b waxing show i will be on tomorrow at 3 26 i'm not sure of the topic hey sarah welcome to the 3b waxing show said that makes sense i'm taking notes okay good you were able to get that i will be on tomorrow i'm sticking with the topic this week of waxing yourself at home so it'll be something along the lines of waxing at home uh friday may be about the pads because they are going to be online and in stock friday and I'm excited because I now have three estheticians that are holding or selling, retailing 3B waxing pads in their salon. So this is, uh, I'm excited for 3B waxing because it's a way to expand my business during this time and to help other estheticians with their business during this time. Again, if you found this helpful, uh, DM me the word list and then I can send you the, that list I made where it's all the list of things you need to wax yourself at home and then you can always click the link in the bio and book a call with me to help you wax and if you want to know when I go live tomorrow it's the wax lounge so I will order them on Friday Oh great, yeah, they will be up on Friday. They'll be up on Friday, I'm excited. Uh, they went really fast. All The whole time that we've been in quarantine, they've gone really fast, so I'm very thankful for that. And I'm thankful they're really helping people's skin uh, and improving. And people are learning about exfoliating, so it's just a great thing that I'm really happy about. Is there any last thing that I need to say? So I said the wax lounge, the the list I made, the calls I do. That's pretty much it. So have a good what is today? Wednesday. Because I'm in the house and I'm still doing stuff. It's like you kind of forget what day is what. And then I will be on tomorrow. I will probably actually ta be talking more in depth about what I talk about in this article. So someone is writing an article and they want me to talk about waxing at home and give some information. So I will probably do what I go into depth about what I tell them to do. So when I get off of this live, I plan on emailing them with that information for the for the, their project so have a good wednesday and i will see you tomorrow stay smooth